This is Anfisa from Retina Coach and today I will talk about subretinal fluid drainage during vitrectomy and flute needle. The internal removal of subretinal fluid is possible through the pre-existing retinal break or drainage retinotomy during a fluid air exchange. As we showed in the previous video about retinal flattening techniques, perfluor carbon liquid can assist in subretinal fluid drainage. The cannula tip should be placed above the retinal tear to drain the fluid without causing retinal incarceration or traumatic hemorrhage. The eye can be tilted toward the break to facilitate gravity-related shifting of the fluid to the drainage area. A small amount of subretinal fluid is not necessarily removed completely in case when the retinal break can be treated by endolaser or cryopixy. When the retinal defect is closed, the remaining part of the subretinal fluid will be slowly absorbed by the retinal pigment epithelium. Few types of cannulas could be used while draining the subretinal fluid, the cannula with silicone tip and without. The soft silicone tip has a smaller lumen and it's flexible, thus less traumatic to the retina, but it has lower aspiration rate than the cannula without soft tip. Drainage retinotomy may be used when the primary retinal break is not seen or does not allow removal of most of the fluid. Also, drainage retinotomy is used in the case where subretinal fluid planned to be removed over the posterior pole without perfluor carbon liquid usage. Fluid or backflash fluid needles are usually used to drain the subretinal fluid. The difference between them is that the backflash fluid needle handle incorporates a silicone reservoir with a side port. Pressing on this reservoir causes safe backflashing of the fluid or incarcerated tissue. Regular fluid needle has only the side port for fluid drainage. This video shows a few types of backflash fluid needles for passive drainage and active drainage of fluid. Flute needle for passive drainage works on the principle of the pressure gradient. Thus, to initiate passive drainage of fluid, intraocular pressure should be raised significantly, for example, around 60 mm of mercury. The difference between the intraocular pressure and the lower atmospheric pressure allows the fluid to exit from the side port when it's not closed by the finger. Closure of the exit port by the finger prevents flow from the eye. Active fluid needle can utilize automated suction to aspirate fluid from the eye. Thus, in contrast to passive fluid needle, it does not depend on intraocular pressure. The active fluid needle has a silicon tube connected to the aspiration line of the vitrector. Pressing the pedal of the vitrectomy system while closing the hole over the backflush reservoir creates a vacuum for aspiration. When a hole over the backflush reservoir is open or the pedal of the aspiration is not pressed, there is no vacuum in the system, thus there is no aspiration. Important to know that an active flute needle can also be used as a passive one. We invite you to visit the retinacoach.net website, subscribe to our YouTube channel and comment down below with any video ideas you want to see us do. Thank you for your attention.